In this tips and tricks sessions, we'll install the print and cut camera and configure it in Gravistyle 9, Build 6, and above. After installing Gravistyle 9, we'll go to the files folders and we'll navigate to the C drive and Gravistyle subfolder print and cut. Next you'll select the driver camera 64-bit folder. Within that folder you will then select the UI executable file. Then you'll right click and run as administrator. Once the file has finished installing then you will go to Gravistyle and launch the calibration job that you'll find in the Gravistyle 9 print and cut folder. It's the Vision Calibration. Once that has opened in Gravistyle, you can go to the Windows Start menu, scroll down to the IDS folder, and select the UI Cockpit application. When this launches, you'll want to click on the Start UI Cockpit in Expert mode, and then click on Optimal Colors. Once this launches, then you can initiate the camera view by clicking on the upper left-hand corner uh, icon to open the camera, and then you should see the camera view populate the window. Provided the camera view is um, oriented correctly, meaning the ruler is on the left side and the top side, then you are good to proceed back into Gravistyle. Your camera is working properly. If it is not uh, oriented properly, then you'll need to go into the camera settings in the UI cockpit and change the orientation of the camera. Within the UI cockpit camera view, you can also trigger an autofocus of the camera by clicking on the icon that has the nine green boxes in it, and that will launch an autofocus. Once you've completed this, you'll go back to Gravistyle and edit your calibration job save by clicking on the line on the right side and deleting it and the orange line along the bottom and deleting it. Now you can select the power and speed uh, desired for the type material. Typically the calibration uh, is done on Gravaply laser which will give you a better contrast if you process it in two light passes as opposed to one heavy pass. Um, this will enhance the ability for the camera to get an accurate calibration uh, on your initial try. It's also very important to ensure that you automatically focus the material before starting the uh, calibration plate or initiating the calibration sequence with the camera. Once the calibration plate is created, you can wipe any debris off of it, place it back in the machine in the upper left corner, and then initiate the print and cut module by clicking on the objects header and then print and cut icon. That will launch the camera view and uh, quickly the camera will show the existing calibration with a grid that's displayed. On the right hand side you would see the last job that was uh, activated. So the next step you'll want to do is launch calibration by clicking on the icon that has the rows of dots up top. Then on the right hand side you can select the top icon and uh, trigger the auto Z by the circle in brackets. If the calibration isn't sharp and crisp then go ahead and use the plus or minus until you get the sharpest view you can. Uh, once that's achieved, then and you're sure that the machine has already been auto zed then you can come down and click on the um, green arrow button uh, down in the bottom, and that will launch the calibration of the camera. This is required once uh, when you install the camera initially, it will prompt you to uh, tell it yes that you're calibrating. It's going to go and find the three bold dots in the center. 
then it's going to apply grid. You're looking for that grid to have as much green as possible. If you see a good deal of red or magenta in that, then check your lighting, check to make sure that your plate's clean, and then reinitialize the calibration again. You want the best quality calibration you can for the initial um, time that you run that process. Once it's done, you shouldn't need to recalibrate unless you change the electronics in the uh, laser or you install Gravistyle on another uh, PC. Once that's finished, then it will show you at the top that the calibration was successful. So now I'll take my calibration plate out and install the um, Gravibox sheet. We'll close out the print and cut window. The next thing I want to do is start a new job. And it's very important when using print and cut process that you open the new job for the process and you have zero margins and you use the full plate size of the laser. So in this case, I'm using an LS900. So my material definition is 24 by 24 inches with zero margins. Now I can launch print and cut process. The interface window will pop up. Once the uh, window pops up, then it will activate the camera. And the next thing that I want to do is to go to the gears and go into the configuration uh, for the print and cut module. This area will allow me to compensate for any offset by adding values in X, Y. Also allow me to change the preview size based on the customer's uh, monitor resolution so that my menus don't appear off of the screen. Also, I can change the number of markers that the machine expects me to press check mark for to validate. You always want this to be a minimum of one marker that you check manually. Uh, two is better. Two ensures that it gets the appropriate scale. Beyond that, the software is good at registering the other markers and making adjustments for any stretch or skew. Um, below that is the auto validation timeout. This denotes how long it waits for you to validate a check mark before it automatically accepts its selection and moves on to the next reference point. You need a minimum of four um, registration or fiduciary marks in the corners of your material. Um, if you are doing a larger print or you your printer tends to stretch the print, you may want to add additional registration marks uh, internally in that print that would help it to compensate for the stretch or skew in the quadrant that it occurred in your print. Uh, when it's preparing the cut lines within the software. When you finish making your entries, you'll want to click the green box at the bottom to save those entries. Now we can go and click on the folder that will return us to the standard window. From that point, we can open the PDF file that contains our cut lines. Once that has been opened, then it will appear as a preview in the window on the right hand side. Okay. Now, the three icons up here, the first one initiates the registration so that it goes out and looks for the fiduciary marks. The second one allows you to uh, flatten the vector lines or have it respect the fact that there are multiple vector lines that are different colors. So if you flatten it, it's going to come all in on one layer. As you see, um, if you select that icon, then it will respect the colors that were assigned uh, when the PDF was created and allow you to perhaps assign cut lines to red, perforation lines to blue, uh, a light score line to a green color, for instance, but just allows you to bring in the different levels of color and intents with each of those lines. Okay. So once we click on the um, icon to initiate the fiduciary registration, it's going to go to the number one mark. It's going to highlight the circle in the center of that mark. You hit check on the laser 
it will register that mark and advance to the next one. You can hit check again. If it happens that it's reading off center, then you can, with the mouse, click on the spot that you want the fiduciary to register, and it will. And then after the second one, it should automatically sequence to the third and the fourth with a short pause, allowing you to um, make an adjustment if it's not seeing the right mark. Once that's been done, it's going to tell you at the top that you have a successful um, registration attempt. Then you would click the green check mark and it's going to bring your vector lines in onto your composition table. Okay, and this will adjust for stretch, skew, rotation. At this point, you're ready to make color assignments um, and then powers and speeds associated with those color assignments and send the job over to the laser. Okay, if you need to change the lines, um, reassign those, then you'll need to select the image, ungroup it, then you can select individual contours and uh, make your color assignments based on that. Okay, we can see that over to the right, I have assigned the blue color to be perforation cuts. I've assigned the red color to be vector cuts. As well, the green color is vectors that coincides with my design. So now we'll go to the lasering tab. And in the lasering tab, I can set my parameters by color um, in this case, I'm just going to go in and select my uh, user-defined cardstock for print and cut, and it's loaded in all of my uh, presets for power and speed uh, for each of my cutting lines as well as for my perforations. And then you're ready to send that to the laser and run the process. Print and cut utilizing the registration camera can be used on the LS900 and LS1000 series. The LS100 series and the large table rotaries can perform print and cut utilizing the red spotting beam. Here are samples of the application integrating a UV flatbed printer for point of purchase displays, ADA signage, and merchandising applications.